Good evening. I wrap in of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up for this Wednesday and we are now at the 16th of March 2021 and we're about 6:20 p.m. Central Time. So you have a difficult day tomorrow. Uh, there's a great elephant in the room called the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve is going to release their monetary policy statement at 1 p.m. We're going to hear the press conference at 1:30. I don't know if they're going to give us forward guidance or not. I don't know if they're going to issue new dot plots. We'll find out all that they want to do, but I think that it's time they do because we haven't had anything like that since December, as I recall it. Plus, now we have new events. We have the $1.9 trillion package where money's being passed out. Small business is going to get a chunk. States, lo local localities, as they call it, schools. Money's going back into the system. Things are going to open. The COVID vaccine is working. It's spreading through America like wildfire. Over 20% of the people are being vaccinated, and the numbers every day are staggering. You know, if you lived in Europe, you've got nothing like this. Uh, they're talking more and more lock-ins happening now. So you want to be very cautious with that. It's one of the reasons the dollar's been gaining on the euro. Uh, one of the big trades of the year was hoping that the euro would gain on the dollar because we saw them holding interest rates down longer than the U.S. would do and throwing more money. Well, the parts of that are right. The COVID has thrown them completely off because what the COVID has unfortunately done is it's put them behind the eight ball for a while. They'll get out from under it, but you got to deal with that. But how do you trade the Fed? Well, in the futures markets, you get the opportunity to come out because futures you're in and out of all the time. That's not quite the case in spiders and ETFs. So you got to make that decision. I know what I teach uh, in my futures course. If you don't have to stand in front of a train, you don't do it. It's not a game of chicken. There's always another opportunity. When I look at GameStop, where did the market start failing? Well, up here, but it was running the upper Bollinger Band. It got overbought and it's in a corrective mode. Now, it did not today take out because the low is 172.35, 17200. If that occurs, the odds favor you're going back down to the 18-day average of closes and the market might try to regroup there. That's just what the odds are. Momentum down, bias up, trend up. Two of the three still favorable. In AMC, the market's running into trouble right where it should, the upper Bollinger Band. Now, they're opening, as I told you yesterday, lots of movie theaters. We're going to see more and more revenue coming in, but I just question if they can ever make enough revenue to pay off all the debt that they've taken on. They're not a Cinemark, so I own the movie theater, so I do look at some of this. I am not giving trading advice. I am just questioning, can they ever do that? Uh, in the meantime, you can see how they're running the upper Bollinger band. We'll see just what goes on there. When I look at PAVE, it's in a corrective possibility now. The market had the outside day up yesterday. What did you do today? What did I say I like when you get an outside day up? You take out that low and it's a sign without anything else on the chart. And that's what I love about it. That uh-oh, until it gets back over that part, if I were long, I am probably cutting my position down rather dramatically, and I'll take another look. Why? Because often when you get that pattern, price in the 18-day average, or the closest moving average to it, make a run at each other. In this case, it's certainly not the 200 or the 100, it's right here. I'm wrong if yesterday's high at 24.75 is taken out. So I, I know what that would be. When I look here at the market, you can see, and we're looking now at the Bollinger Bands, where's it fighting? It's been fighting at that upper Bollinger Band, and I think it's hit a Bollinger Band every day for the past week and a half. When I step over to the uh, other part with the slow stochastics, it's still embedded. I have two arguments going here. I have one argument calling for a downside. The other argument saying, no, I'm still fully embedded, the momentum's up. If that red line closes under 80, the odds of the market going back to the 2363 go up exponentially. Again, I'd be wrong if you make it over that high, but that would be what I call lost embedded slow stochastic trade. THCX, 
uh, the market's got a pattern of a higher high, lower low, just a broad swath here. Outside day down, again, if you took out this day's high, today's, then I'd look for the upper Bollinger Band. Now the market might be saying it wants to pull back for support at the 18-day average of closes. In SMH, the short-term trend has turned back up. Momentum is up. The market finally closed over the 18-day average of closes. Therefore, I think the pros will turn buyer. At 236.03, the 18-day average, I think they're wrong, and I think they'll throw in the towel if you get under 227.75, and I think they'll look ultimately for wherever the upper Bollinger Band comes in. In the industrial sector, we have been in an uptrend with an embedded reading. It's been riding the upper Bollinger Band. This is the first chance the market's giving on a break. I think the pros will be waiting for that. I think they'll be buying what's called a another moving average that comes in right here. You'll, if you're a subscriber of mine, my paid subscribers in the morning, you see that average, you know what it is. But that's what I think they'll do. And again, I think that these traders in these markets, these spiders and all, they're not like futures traders. They wait, uh, they, they, they don't come in and out like the futures uh, guys do. I think they'll still be playing the market as though there is no Fed for the day tomorrow. In XLE, I'd want no part of the long side now. You lost your embedded reading. You have a reading, in fact, under the uh, 79 level. That's even worse for it. I think price and the 18-day average are going to make a run at each other. I think this leg of the uptrend, at a minimum, ended. That does not mean you're starting a bare leg. On QQQ, you ended a bare leg. If you take a look at what this market had been doing, you'd had a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. The key was to end it. If you take out right here, this 319.86 level, you did it. And when you do that, game over. This leg to the downside, as far as I'm concerned, will take a while to reinstate. Uh, the action here has now turned more favorable. It is overbought, and you're not hearing me say that I think the pros are going to buy it, but I think the bear leg has come to an end. In the EFA, the emerging market on a chart, you're too overbought, I think, to want to do anything. Trend up, bias up, maybe you go to the upper Bollinger Band. You've stopped at the lower band a bunch of times. I'll bet that if you hit it, that'll stop it on this run. In the gold market, all you did is went back to the 18-day average, and again, you ended back here, this bare leg, right here. That ended it. Now, if you lose the embedded reading, which you did, what are you looking for? My rule of thumb is unless you take out this low, you're going back to the 18-day average of closes. It's called a lost embedded slow stochastic trade. As you know, I'm doing an enhanced course on Bollinger Bands right now that I hope to finish this week. Uh, I worked on it all day again today. More and more chapters. I love how the chapters are coming out. It'll be an online uh, enhanced Bollinger Band course, and I'm going to do one on slow stochastics as well for you. So there's more and more coming than outside days, how you use those. So these fit in with my charting course. I'm assuming you took the charting course. If not, I'm assuming you're proficient in slow stochastics or Bollinger Bands because I'm not going to reteach them. I'm going to take you to the next level of them. So master's degree in it. Got it? Maybe a doctorate. So when I look at how this market is right here, I see it coming up and getting to that 18-day average. That's all it was worth. Now, game reset. What's it going to do next? When I take a look at gold miners, different. The gold miners have been trading at and above the 18-day average with a pattern of higher and lows, higher highs. So they've reached up, the trend is up, but they're overbought. Be very careful. In between right here and that upper Bollinger Band, I'm expecting a lot of resistance. TLT oversold going into the report tomorrow, and what else? If you look at today's low, 135.50, it just missed the Bollinger Band, but you hit it back here. I think the pro money's out of this. I think the pros don't want to be in certain markets because they, they might not be able to protect themselves, and I think those will be these interest rate markets, because whatever the Fed says tomorrow, what markets do you think it hits right away? We know it's going to hit stock indices, but we know it also hits uh, the, uh, the interest rates. And then from the interest rates, the currencies get hit. And you can see you're still very much in a downtrend. I think the market will have great trouble 
staying in this chart under the 200 day average. It's very oversold and not even attempting to embed. You know, what I watch during the day, you might not watch. Uh, so often I, I'll have a position on for my clientele. And I'm looking and I'm going, should I send them out an alert? Uh, the market's close to where I want them to either get in, get out, whatever the situation. I will open up pivot points. I want to see how that number that comes out of this ties in, if, if it does tie in with my position, what's the momentum doing in this? These are the real short-term charts real short term. I use them to figure out if my other numbers are right. I do not tell people to trade off of them. Some people do. I have, I think, a better whole package, but I certainly love this. I use them. How do you use them? Well, I put together a free three-part video course. Just go to our website. You'll take a look. Gives you an idea of how I teach because when I put out this enhanced Bollinger Band course, if you're a Bollinger Band fanatic like I am, uh, this is going to be something that you want to see. I'm I. Rapstein. You have a great day, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care.